Hello, welcome to Quackalope. Thank you for being here. Today we're playing Far Cry Beyond, and I'm going to be honest, I'm playing this on the evening after going through the entire campaign we have in the prototype here in front of me. You see, I learned the game solo, and I had a blast playing it solo. And then I taught Shira, I experienced it with Alex, we lost a few times along the way, but finally made it to the end of the story. But there's still a package left unopened in the box over here to the side, and I'm enjoying this enough that I'm not satisfied not seeing what's inside that box. So, it is cold and blustery outside. I made myself an old fashioned in my uh, handmade Quackalope uh, tumbler. There's like four feet of snow outside or something crazy like that. So it is a perfect night to dive in to a solo game. So Far Cry Beyond is going to be a simultaneous play multiplayer game. I don't even know if you're technically supposed to play it solo, but I'm going to dig in with two characters that I've enjoyed playing throughout the course of the gameplay and just kind of experience them. You won't be able to see the simultaneous play as much. However, I will operate both characters at the same time, so you'll see a little bit of more action flow and sequencing. I do think double handing, which is that's what it's called when you run two characters at the same time, is totally doable and might be one of the ways that I experience most of the campaign in this game just by the nature of it. I want to see the story so much, I will probably still be getting it to the table myself. For me, this is a it's a really fun helter skelter dice chucking game with a lot of hard mechanics and systems that really press you to make the most of every little action you have. You're going to have your main characters down here on the board who have their own unique weapons, their own unique traits or skills. Uh, I think they're called stunts specifically. And then their own reactions that they drop at the start of the scenario. You're also going to have various enemies that interact with you based on a series of AI or programming that usually comes down to deciding how much health each one has and what appropriate action they'll take based off of that health. So... I'll teach you the game a little bit and talk through it as we play, but really, if you haven't watched the gameplays yet, go swing over and watch those. This is my chance to take a closer look at whatever content they have left for me to reveal. So we're going to talk about scene one being complete. This will be exactly after episode one with Shira and I when we uh, rip apart the guys at the gas station uh, or the Soviets at the gas station. We have a decision to make. We could either go to uh, the diner, which is what we chose to do, or make your stand outside. So, scene one complete. What the hell? Ray's pauses to catch his breath and wipes blood off his face. That didn't go as planned. That was way too close. They're Soviet, all right, shouts Boris. Look at their papers. I don't need to look at their damn papers, Hunter groans. Just look at this bastard. Everyone looks over to one of the workers, workers in full mil military uniform under his overalls. How did you not notice that? That's proof, Butch shouts, calling Rosie back to his side. We're done. Let's bring the intel back to the agency. I ain't dying in Nebraska. Too late. We got company. You hear tires screeching against the tarmac outside. Through the windows, you see headlights headed in this direction. Maybe they're just looking for gas, Hunter sneers. All due respect, muchacho, answers Reyes. I don't think this is the time for jokes. The cars appear in the distance. If we go back to the car, Reyes continues, we'll be face to face with them, and who knows how many they are. There's a back door, blurts Pam. We could head out the diner over there, sneaky like, maybe hold our ground there. I'm going to choose to make your stand outside. Unseal envelope 903. Now, the characters that I'm playing on is going to be Hunter McCoy, who's going to have a sniper rifle, and I am using their full health, and I'm using some of their upgraded weapons because the game's been challenging enough to this point as it is. Now, I'm not carrying over any loot or gear we might have found inside the event, because I'm, I'm kind of playing this off sequence. And just so you know, the viewer, throughout the course of the game, we would have a series of revive tokens, and we'd be operating as a party of mercenaries. These revive tokens could be used to switch out characters throughout every single scene or session that we play, or it could be utilized to pick up one of our characters to half health during an actual event and encounter. I'm going to give myself one of those for this scenario, assuming that I maybe switched out a character and picked someone up in the last scene. So we are looking for 
unsealed envelope number 903, which I think is going to be the last big envelope in here. So let's go ahead and grab my uh, uh, Spyderco knife. I don't know if you're familiar, this is going to be the Spyderco Paramilitary 3, which is a absolutely lovely blade, except for the fact that I completely dulled the edge on it. I know it's still fairly sharp, but uh, amazing blade. The thing I like so much about this, I got this as a Christmas gift uh, a few years back. Easy. One-handed open, one-handed closing. See that? This makes it so nice to just carry with you and uh, pop open and have on hand to use. Um, all right, what is inside here? So I think we are going to be pulling. Ooh, ooh, we have an enemy I haven't even seen. Does that mean we have more minis that I haven't broken out yet? Oh, I'm glad I did this. Okay, let's see here. So, we are popping out the Undisputed Corporal, who is a sequence of five, which is going to be higher than any of the guys we currently have operating. And we're going to need a spot for him to live. I'll figure that out in just a second. We have, it looks like, a few lock boxes or mailboxes outside here. And by the way, this is a prototype, so uh, any of the components you see right now will not be kind of the final example there. And it looks like we're getting potentially shield tokens for the first time this game round. And I did learn about how shield tokens operate. They're gonna block a single point of damage when it comes through. Um, basically exactly how you'd assume shield tokens operate. But it is interesting that if we didn't go down this pathway, which we didn't, this was not something that we had going into the final sequence or the final scene. Uh, that's really, I don't know. I'm really, I'm really fascinated by some of the stuff that's currently locked behind uh, some of the additional content. So my assumption is, I'm interested. My assumption is we are not going to, oh, this is so cool. Okay, so the dogs who are going to be the, the enemy that we actually explore and encounter uh, aren't in this scene because we are fighting the undisputed corporal, which wasn't in the scene if we were fighting the dogs. Uh, we're going to go ahead and have their whole sequence here, which we'll look through in just a second, but we also get two upgrades. We get the chance to upgrade our, uh, well, this is the weapon for the Undisputed Corporal. More sad about that than not. We have a K-10 uh, Patriot bite down action. On hit, inflict bleed. This is going to be an, uh, an enemy uh, gear card, which is going to pair with the, uh, with the dogs over here but this is different from the gear card that we already have. Very fascinating, because the gear card we have is Restrain, where they kind of hold on to you and slow you down. Do not open until instructed. Okay, I will not open you until I'm instructed. And let's go ahead and take a look at our sequence here. Scene two, who left the Kabakan out? Okay, you step out of the shack, unsure of yourselves. Are we really doing this? Kamiko asks hesitantly. As if to answer her, two vans burst into the station. A towering figure barges out of the driver's seat and unleashes a pack of dangerous looking dogs. A pack of Soviet, equally dangerous looking, step out of the second vehicle. The giant turns from their dogs, notices you, and starts barking orders at their men. You look at each other. All right, everyone. We can do this, asserts Reyes, barely containing his fear. It's just like the, the old job. Except this here is for real, Hunter quips, loading his gun with a surprising calmness. Not for movie stunts, you understand. You understand that, right? In the distance, the Soviets blow up the front of your van. The shockwave and the heat of rush of blood to your heads, sweat instantly pearls on your skin. Yeah, this is for real, boasts Pam. But still, let's give him a show. You draw your weapons. All right, action. Cool. So, that's the scene, and this is going to be the setup. We do have dogs here, which is interesting, because the dogs were discovered in the other package. So, I wonder how that works. I'm not sure. Doesn't bug me. Maybe you have to pull them out of that other package anyway. 
Um, but I'd be curious. This is a prototype, so I give them some leniency on how everything sort of comes out and flows. So this is going to be the board. Looks like we're going to be out here in a giant parking lot. And we have the Undisputed Corporal. Uh, let's check what he's going to do. So 0 to 2, target the closest player, move towards target, attack target if able. Not too bad. 3 through 7, which is how many wounds he has. Activate uh, imp imp Empire, uh, gain plus 1 movement, target the closest player, move towards target, attack target. So, uh, Inspire, okay. Pause, all melee enemies move one space towards the player closest to them. All enemies except itself attack if able. And then dismay, when the corporal dies, discard any shield markers remaining on enemies. So he's going to be giving people shield markers as well. So let's stick some status symbols here. <clears throat> and this guy kind of looks like a one-off boss, which is interesting. Okay. New content. One game board, the gas station. One enemy board plus figure, the undisputed corporal. So we are going to open the very last piece the puzzle. Wait. <clears throat> Is this a piece? No, that's just the foam insert that made me. Very last piece of the puzzle here is going to be the miniature for the corporal. I have really liked the miniature so far, so I'm excited to see what this guy looks like. Hello, corporal. Ooh, gas mask and all. Very shiny head. Looks like they had to super glue that on at some point. Still, uh, a little waxy. I wonder where that's from. It must be the sealant or the uh, oil they make to actually release it from its mold, because these are going to be resin prototypes, so they're not uh, they're not as refined as the plastic that you'll get in the final copy. Okay, instructions. Open box 910. Set the gas station game board in the center of the table. Reshuffle the two loot decks and the reaction deck. Place them next to the board. Set up the corporal pot potriot. Brigadier and Gunner Board with their behavior and gear cards. So we are using the Patriot, which is cool, which works for me. Um, it looks like, though, we're going to be using the Bite action instead of the Restrain action. So we're going to be transferring Bleed. Use the map to place all figures and tokens on their starting positions and sides. Each player draws up to three reaction cards. Special rules. Suit up. At the start of the scene, place one shield counter on each enemy's status area. Okay? Gas pump. Targetable plus cover. Upon taking damage, it is discarded and explodes, dealing one damage in a space radius, in a one space radius, and setting all affected spaces ablaze. So we should look up what ablaze means and what bleed means for the dogs. Bleed. The affected character places a bleeding marker on their status area. As long as, there, it is, as it is there, the character takes one damage at the start of their turn. And Blaze. Place a fire token on the affected area in all spaces in a radius X around it. The unit standing in the space with a fire token takes one damage at the end of its turn. Any loot token sharing a space with the fire token is removed from play. Okay. Defeat all enemies to win. Then open envelope 907. And 907, which should be on this side, 907 is going to be the envelope that led us into uh, kind of the main bunker. We escape from this and run into uh, the next scene. So, what do we need here? We are going to need the general himself. He's going to be positioned right over here. We need, it looks like, a previously exploded section of flame. Cool. So that's going to pile in here. So we don't want to move on to that spot, but we would like to push people. We're going to grab two dogs to have right next to the general here. We're going to have another pile of flame around the outside. This is going to be our van, which exploded on the way here. Well, didn't explode on the way here. We got here and they exploded it. A lot of loot, which is different from uh, the last scenario. The last scenario did not have really any loot scattered inside of the diner. So I already like the fact that I'm gonna be able to pick up a few more things. Looks like we have a gunner. It's gonna be positioned right here. We have a dog who's going to be positioned beside the gunner. We have a brigadier 
who's going to be positioned all the way up top here. Another dog. We are using all the dogs in this scene, so they're kind of coming at a uh, snare for us. We have a few gas pumps, which are going to be able to explode, so we want to do damage to those probably fairly quickly because the use usefulness of them is uh, really immediate. And my two characters. We're going to have uh, Pam. I'm going to have her start, I guess, right here. And we're going to have my sniper start right there. Uh, my goal is honestly going to be to take his head off first and then sort of spread over to the other guys. Maybe deal some damage to those locations. People are going to hide behind them to start with. This guy's going to move. This person's going to hide behind it. Hmm. In terms of cover, there's not much out here. I could position myself behind this, possibly. Uh, and there's not much that's impassable or immovable. So, I say we go ahead and get started. So, here's the scene. We're fighting down. Let's check the cards that I have with each of my characters. So, I have the sniper rifle over here with Hans. I'll move that up here so I can keep an eye on it a little bit closer. We have Fool's Gambit. Roll orange. Uh, if successful, deal one damage to an adjacent enemy. Dodge one attack. Heal two HP. Move the closest non-adjacent enemy one space or closer to you. Move any enemy one space in any direction. Switch positions with an adjacent unit. Your next attack will deal plus one damage. Uh, 11 health here for Pam. 3 activation. 3 activation and 7 health here for Hunter. So, I think the best course of action is to go ahead and use this sniper rifle. Target was within a range of 6 to 7. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That guy's in the perfect position. We are going to aim and fire with uh, our sniper rifle. That is going to be a hit. And we have the Lucky Shark Tooth, which is an upgrade that we got a little bit later on, but I'm using it either way because it's fun. I'm going to be able to potentially double that damage. I did not double that damage, but that is going to be a total of three damage firing directly into this beefy guy. He's going to have a total of eight potential health. Two, three. Uh, so for context, when you're playing with multiple people, you'd be going kind of simultaneously. I can work between my characters until I've expended all of my movement points, which I'm going to go ahead and spend a few of the movement points here to go ahead and duck behind cover. I'm going to spend two to go ahead and get in a little bit of a better position here with Hunter. Uh, I don't know if I want to spend another one. I have Volt and I have Super Jump as his uh, skills. Um, Volt allows me to jump over something. Super Jump allows me to get on top of something. I don't think either of those are going to be super useful at the moment. Pam is over here with her shotgun. And honestly, I think Pam's best bet is to move one and then go ahead. She's going to be open line of sight, but he's going to be targeted here from this guy. He's potentially going to get blocked by some of that terrain. So I think Pam's best bet is just to shoot that uh, gas station monitor there because we're going to explode it. There's going to be fire all over the place. So we're going to be rolling a yellow. That is going to be a hit. I'm going to collide it directly with this. So this is going to explode. We're going to be dealing. Let me check the status of it. Uh, where is the, where is the uh, information I had? Um, targetable. Discarded, dealing one damage in a space radius everywhere around it. So that orange dog is going to grab a damage. Goodbye, orange dog. And the red brigadier is going to grab a damage, which is perfectly fine for me. There should be no damage left on him. Red brigadier. And we're going to spread fire all over this area. So they, hopefully, will also begin taking damage from burning. I actually am going to spend another movement point to uh, move her one step away because I just realized that the dog's in a position. So he's got movement left. She moved, uh, what, one so far? She's going to spend another movement to actually move one more step away, maybe here and then back up to here. So that dog can't reach her. Neither of these dogs can reach her. I think that's going to be our activation. And we're ready to go ahead and get started with uh, the characters. So the characters are going to go based off of hierarchy. Um, oh, and when we set up, <sighs> forgot this, didn't I? 
the start of the scene place one shield counter on each enemy's status area. So, the dog did not take a damage. The brigadier did not take a damage. Uh, the this guy, let's check how shields work just to be sure about this. Do they block all damage? When a shield character takes damage, their shields protect and discard shield counter you, uh, as you would HP counters before starting. So he would have had one additional health. And I think that brings us back to normal. Anyone else, though, some of these dogs still need some shields. So this dog, this dog, this dog still has a shield. And down here, this guy still has a shield. Okay. So, zero to two. Uh, currently has two damage, so that's okay. Target the closest player, move towards target, attack target if able. We're going to move two. One, two. We have the MP133, uh, which is going to roll a red dice. If target is adjacent, roll a yellow dice instead. So it's going to be rolling a, yellow, a red dice to try to target me, and I am behind cover. So that's going to be a hit, but I get to roll a dodge. This is going to be a successful dodge, so we're not actually going to do damage. Then we're going to go down to the next in line, which is going to be the Brigadier. The Brigadier is going to move one, two in my direction. The Brigadier is going to take a point of damage because he is currently on fire. Okay. Then we're going to move to this, uh, this, uh, who's this guy? This Gunner, the, uh, illustrious Gunner. The Gunner is going to go ahead and fire over here at Hunter. We're rolling on, so zero, 0 through 3 when it comes to damage. Target the closest player, attack target, and then check to make sure he's behind cover, which he currently is. He's going to roll a yellow die, which is going to be a hit, but I am behind cover, so let's see if I dodge it. I do successfully dodge that yellow die. And the last thing is going to be the dog. So 1-2 with the dog, 1-2 with the dog, 1-2 with the dog, and 1-2 with the dog. That dog would move out of fire, I assume, that's how dogs work. Okay, the purple dog is going to be doing a bite and hopefully inflicting a bleed on me. Not that I want the bleed, but the dog would like me to take the bleed. So that is going to happen unless I'm able to dodge, which I think I have dodge one attack. So I'm going to go ahead and utilize my uh, action to dodge one attack from that dog. And that is all the enemy phase. We are back up to three movement. I did not take a bleed token. And I need someone to come deal with that dog as efficiently as possible. Because I'm in a, bad, a bit of a bad spot. I could vault and start running. I could just snipe someone and try to take them out. Um, these dogs are going to be a problem because they're going to establish a lot of bleed. But all I have to do is take out everyone here at the scene and then I get to move forward. And to move forward, I'd open this 907. <clears throat> and I really want to open that last package. So, looking at this scene, I am one, two, three, four, five spaces away. If I take a step back with my sniper, one, two, three, four, five, still five. There are a spot where I'd actually be six. I could vault and move sideways. Let's do that. We'll spend an action to go ahead and vault, and then I'll move one, two, one, two, three, four, five. Still not going to be in a good position, and honestly, that makes me more vulnerable. Now, I am working through this a little bit, kind of doing the math of it, because we're not doing simultaneous play at the moment, um, and I want to treat this a bit more of a puzzle than I think I do when I'm playing with a lot of other people. So, I need to be able to take a clean pot shot at someone. And the, I really would like to kill this guy, but honestly, I think I'm going to have to go ahead and target the Brigadier here and see if I can do some damage to him. So I'm going to fire from the position I'm in at the Brigadier. Because of the range, we're going to be rolling the green die. That is going to be a hit, and we're going to be rolling the black die to see if we get a crit. We do not get a crit, but we are going to be able to do three total damage over here. Uh, then... I need to decide if I'm going to move, and I think I'm going to vault and step over here, which is going to get me a loot, so I'm going to go ahead and grab a red loot card. Four eyes. Upgrade all your dice for this round. Does not affect the cover die. Okay. I am going to... I have one movement left, if I wanted. I could vault over this other side. I think I am. I'm going to vault over this as well. 
just to start working my way sort of out of the fray of it a little bit. Now, with Pam, the dogs won't reach me if I take one step back, but I won't be in cover anymore. You could take two steps to the side and then two dogs would reach me. It's a bad spot to be in. I could also move up and just grab that treasure and admit to the fact that I'm probably going to take damage. Pam is going to fire a shot. Who do I really want to take out? I think, I think the Undisputed Corporal has got to be my main target. So, we're going to roll a yellow die, uh, going for two damage on the Undisputed Corporal. That is going to be a miss. I don't have the option to roll that again. So, we're going to go one, two, picking up this treasure. With her, I'm actually going to get the green card. Soda Ball Auto. Gain two movement points this round. Repeat this effect for the next round. Ooh. So I could pop up. I am popping back up to three. And I'll have bonus movement next round. So if I go one, two, three, I'm actually in a great position. Because the dogs won't reach me. These guys will. But I'm, I'm kind of okay with that. And there's gear back there that I can pick up. And I would like to pick that up if possible. So, I think that's where I'm going to stop, and that's going to be the rest of all of my actions. So, we're going to activate the troops again. So, Undisputed Corporal uh, still has two damage, target the closest player, who he's going to target me. So, we're going to move one, two, right over to me. I didn't actually see that. He's going to be rolling a red die. Uh, if target is adjacent, roll a yellow instead. This is bad, because he's got a shotgun. And he's going to be able to deal some damage. Miss. That is exactly what I needed. Uh, I'm very, very, very grateful for that. Because that's three damage, and that's three damage I cannot sustain. Uh, after him, we're going to have the Brigadier here. He's going to turn around, step off of that flame so he's no longer on fire. And he's going to be rolling a green baton die. That is going to be a hit. Then he's going to be rolling a orange to see if he's able to immobilize me, which he is not. And Pam will go ahead and take... A damage. Now that this guy is going to act, he's going to be able to fire that AK-47 right at my head, rolling the yellow, which is a hit, checking to see if it's doubled, which it is not. So that yellow is going to be dealing two damage, down to five health out of the seven that I started with. Now the dogs are going to go. Uh, this dog is going to go one, two to try to loop around. This dog is going to go one, two to try to go my way. This dog is going to move right here. And this dog is going to go 1, 2 to try to get around as well. Uh, this green dog is the only one that can reach. He's going to be rolling a green die to see if he's able to bite and inflict bleed on me. He is able to bite me. I don't have a way to dodge this. I'm going to take... Uh, let's see if we can find a bleed token. Yep, I'm going to take a bleed token here on Hunter. He's going to lose 1 health uh, every round. And is it the start or the end of his turn? Because that'll matter for the activations that he can do. Bleed. The start of their turn. Great. So one damage from the dog. And then we're passing and one damage at the start of his turn. So the puzzle now is how he gets out of the current mess he's in. We're popping up to five over here because of the soda. Three over here with Hunter. And he's, he's great at range, but he has too many people directly around him. Sort of an oversight that I've made. So does he continue ignoring the people around him? This is a fantastic time to hit and explode that fire. Let's do that. He's going to take a step back. He's going to roll targets within range three. So one step, two steps, three steps. That puts this at range four which means you're going to be rolling an orange die. And I can do three damage to one thing, or I can do three damage spread. I think we're going to go for three damage spread. That's going to explode this location, dropping fire down on all of these spots. And the dog, the gunner, and the other dog are all going to take one damage, which isn't a lot, but it does start ticking up. So... 
the gunner has a shield and the purple and green dog actually both have shields so effective but not as effective as I, I really feel like I needed it to be now who could I actually kill I'm in a position where I could do three damage four five six seven which wouldn't quite be enough but then I could tackle so let's go ahead and fire our shotgun up here at the Brigadier with uh, Pam. Pam is rolling. That is going to be a hit. Uh, we were able to... Oh, I should have rolled a green die. I'll keep the hit, but I'll roll it again. We are going to be able to do three damage directly to him. And then I'm not even going to add the damage because I'm going to do a tackle, which takes two of my movement, pushes him back, dealing one damage. We move into that space, and he's going to be knocked off the board. After that, we've got three movement left. I think I go one, two, three. And I'm going to go ahead and grab one of these weapon cards. This is going to be a hand grenade. Pick any space in the room. Deal one damage to all units in a one space radius around it. Awesome. So really, I should go ahead and throw that. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, and I'm going to pick this space right here. So I'm going to deal one damage to everyone around here. So one to them, one to the green dog and one up here to our corporal and that is going to be everyone's actions so now we're going to go this guy's going to spin around corporal's going to go ahead and fire he's rolling a yellow dice which is going to be three unless i can dodge i cannot mm. well this is a problem because that three damage is going to knock me down so i have one revive which if I can get to him and get him up, that is going to be a, uh, a bit of a puzzle I have to try to solve. So that corporal is acted. This guy here, and he's actually at three. Activate Inspire. Inspire. All melee enemies move one space towards the player closest to them. So dog moves, dog moves, dog moves, dog moves. Uh, all enemies except itself attack if able. Red dog is able to attack. It might inflict bleed. It is going to inflict bleed here on Pam and deal one damage while at it. And then we're going to go ahead and target the closest player, knock him out, which he did. Uh, and we are moving down to our gunner. Our gunner is going to be firing the AK. He's going to stay right where he is. He actually doesn't have cover. So he's going to stay there. And then after his turn, he's going to move behind cover, which takes him out of the fire which is good for him, rolling a yellow. And I'm not under cover, so yellow is going to hit. It is not going to double. We're going to take two damage over here with Pam. Now the dogs are going to activate. We're going to move one, two, one, two, uh, one, two, and that dog is going to be able to attack again, rolling another green and hoping to inflict another bleed. I don't think you take multiple bleed. Not entirely sure about that. Let me check to see if the term is bleed X. Uh, because it might be. Let's see. Bleed. I don't... I don't see it saying that we take multiple bleed, and I would have to uh, dig through the rules just to make sure about that. I'm going to vote we don't just to give me a fighting chance, because right now, uh, I am not, I'm not looking the greatest. So, I'm going to be able to pop up to three. Three movement. I think I need to come around the back here. Because I need to be able to get adjacent to my guy so I can get him up. So one, two, three. I need the support as much as possible. We can switch positions. So let's actually do this. And I know, I'm doing some takes back season, so thinking through it. I'm going to use a movement action here, a switcheroo to switch positions with the player. Then I can go one, two. That two is going to let me discard the single revive token I've given ourselves to stand up my gunner, who can now take his full turn, which is going to be good. I'm going to use his fool's gambit to see if he's able to deal a extra wound against the uh, corporal who took him down. So he's going to be rolling a orange dice or a yellow die. An orange die. That is going to be a hit. So he's going to deal one damage against an adjacent enemy. Now, how do I get him out of the way? We're restoring him to three 
health. Let me check if it's rounded down or up because that one single number could actually be the difference between life and death here. So I need to check revive just to make sure, even if I'm not doing it 100% correct, just to make sure I'm doing it as correctly as possible. Shield target and cover, movement, character action, combat, damage, switching walls, handle, loot cards, reaction weapon, glossary, inventory space. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Character death and outcomes. I could use a revive. Where is it? See page eight. Page eight. Revive an ally. Rounded down. So we don't get that extra health. This game does not like giving you those little extra bits. It is already difficult enough. Give me that one extra hit point, please. But no, it's not going to do that. Okay. I've got three movement with both my characters. I, I, I've got one movement left with Pam. I've got three movement left with my other guy. I think one, two, three. We're going to go and back up across the fire. Pam has not fired her weapon yet. And the green dog has one damage. If Pam fires her weapons and hits here, which is going to be a green roll, that dog is dead. Awesome. Green dog comes off. So we've solved that problem. We're going to have Pam step. Do I just step forward? Do I just embrace destiny? Could step back and over. We're going to have Pam step here. I think that'll get out of the range of the most dogs. It doesn't give me cover, and I'm still going to have the corporal come after me. I think that's the best bet. That's three actions from him, three actions from Pam. Pam should have taken her bleeding token at the start of her turn. And your bleeding token, I believe, should be discarded. Okay, let's activate. We are on the edge. We might get defeated, but we're on the edge of winning. Uh, the Corporal is going to go first. He is above three health, so he's going to target the closest player, move towards. He's also going to activate Inspire, which I forgot about. Every dog moves forward one. He moves here, rolling a yellow die. Whew, miss. That is big. That might... That might just be it, ladies and gentlemen. That might be the point where we have a uh, breath and a hope to come through this. So, with that, this gunner is going to fire his AK. That is going to be a hit. Two damage. Let's check if it's a crit. Never mind. That's where we start falling apart. Four damage coming from there. I'm going to have a dog run forward. That dog is going to be doing a green. That green is going to deal me a damage. And the bleed on my turn is going to deal me a damage. So I'm going to be knocked out. These neck dogs are not going to be able to reach. But they're going to be able to reach very soon. Hunter is in a bit of a predicament. I think I need to move back into the fire. So we're going to move one, two. Okay. <clears throat> I can go ahead and use this reaction. Uh, heal two, move the closest non-adjacent enemy one space closer to you so i'm going to go ahead and bring my health up to five i'm going to move this guy one space closer to me which means he's going to take a damage because he's ending his turn in the fire instead of out of the fire so we're looking at two four five three more damage on him will do it i would need to get a very lucky red die roll though which has terrible odds let's go for it this could be this could be the deal. I'm gonna call that cockeyed. I'm gonna call it cockeyed. I'm not gonna get it. Oh wait, my glasses would upgrade all my die. Do I dare go ahead and turn this success on a two into a success on a three? I think I'm going to try, and I know I'm cheating a little bit, but give it to me. I have one hope. So that's going to be three damage splintering out. Let's see if we double it. We do not. Three damage, however, is enough to go ahead and kill the corporal, which I think might put me, well, it certainly puts me one step closer to, uh, to victory. 
So that's going to be the end of his activation. Green is going to go rolling. That's going to be a miss, which is wonderful. 1-2 with the dog. 1-2 with the dog. That dog is going to take damage. So one damage to the purple. And 1-2 with the dog. Now, I have a movement of 3. I think we're going 1-2-3. And I think we're firing at the yellow dog. Because... I need super lucky hits. There's no way I'm escaping these. They're all going to be closing in on me. And, and with my sniper rifle... I need super lucky hits in order to get this. So, we're going to fire 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It's going to be a distance of 5 away, which means we're going to be rolling a regular orange die. And I need that hit. That is a hit. It's going to be 3 damage on the yellow dog, which is going to result in 2 damage because he does have 1 defense. I believe that is all my activations. Now, this guard's going to fire at me, rolling yellow. But I do have guard, so if it's a success, which it is, I can check. And I'm going to call that cockeyed. That is going to be a block. One dog, one two is going to take a damage. So the red dog is going to take one damage over here. One two, he's going to be able to roll greed, green, inflicting a damage and a bleed on me, which is no fun because at the start of my turn I'm going to take a damage, which means my turn is naturally limited now. That dog's going to move in. We're going to deal one damage. The yellow dog, so he is almost dead. Okay. I'm in a spot now where I am just going to start being mobbed. Is there any way for me to get beyond this? I have Vault to jump over one adjacent cover and land on the opposite side, but that's only if I'm able to kill the guy that's there. I have a Super Jump. I can jump on top, but I need an ally next to me, and I don't have a Revive. Everyone's going to be in the negative zone, which means I'm rolling red dice to try to hit them. And I'm doing a maximum of three damage. So, I think I'm going to roll at the gunman. That is going to be a red hit for three damage at the gunman, which almost takes him out. That's going to be an activation. I'm not going to use my movement. I just don't think I have a good way to do it. One, two, three. I can start escaping, but honestly... Uh, they're going to come after me. So, starting with the gunman. Gunman's going to roll a yellow die. That is going to be a hit. Let's see if I dodge it. That is going to be a unsuccessful dodge. Should have taken one damage to start my turn. I'm taking two damages now, unless it is doubled. It is not doubled. Dog is going to roll a hit. That is a miss, surprisingly enough. This dog is going to step forward. Roll a hit. That is going to be a hit. And I have nothing to dodge. So... That is, that's the scenario out here. Again, another mid-campaign scenario that I am struggling to keep up with and, and losing against. I like the puzzle of this, though. I like the give and take. I love how thematic it is with everyone kind of descending on you and burial barrels exploding and just kind of this open uh, little platform where you're playing in. I do want to see what happens if I had one because I am not re-recording another entire solo play. It is already currently something like 3 a.m. And uh, my bourbon is finished. And the gameplay is finished. So, But I like the story of this. I like the narrative it's telling. It's probably my one of my favorite elements of this game so far. Is all the little upgrades and perks and things you get along the way. And the story that's telling along the way. And I already have a pack of cards, which I'm excited about. So, scene two complete. Let's say I took out all of the guards. You did it. As you catch your breath, the realization of what just happened catches up with you. I think I don't feel very good. Kamiko falls to the ground, her head dizzy from all the smoke and adrenaline. The gas station falls silently again. Falls silent once again. Save for the buzzing of some late cicadas. Night has finally fallen on the stadium. Butch walks over to her. Hey, you all right? Mostly. She gently pushes Rosie away. Is everything okay? Is everyone okay? Mostly. He helps her back to her feet. As she checks her body for serious injuries, Pam grunts. Those were soldiers. Trained soldiers. And well-equipped to boot. Well, Boris sighs, sitting on the ground. Who'd have thought? 
Looks like doing dumb movie stunts prepared us for this kind of thing. Kamiko musters a smile at the idea. I don't feel like a hero yet. All I did was spray and pray and think about my brothers. Wait, hush for a second. Second. Reyes gestures to everyone to be quiet as the ambient noise recedes. You notice something you didn't before. There's a noise coming from the motel. A couple hundred feet from the station, the rundown motel seems to be buzzing with activity. From where you are, you hear some crashes, then gunshots. As you move closer, you hear voices, some pleading uh, in Volian, others half-whispering orders. You, you check that everyone is there, take a deep breath, and kick the front doors open. And that's where we swing into the final scenario, uh, which is going to be the one that Sheer and I went up against, which we also really struggled against. This is a hard game. This is brutal. I want to see what loot we get. So we're going to mix these into the decks. Uh, unlabeled pills, Molotov, Mine, Berserker Juice, and Hand Grenade. And then over here in this one, I think we have the upgrade for... Yes. Ooh. Melee Weapon. Brass Knuckles. So someone could use this. And then uh, Rosie is going to get Chompers. Melee only. Inflict bleed. So our dog gets an upgrade. And we have a soda bottle, soda can, and unlabeled pills in our loot decks. Nice. So that's going to be a solo gameplay. That's the last little bit of content that I uh, had not had a chance to see here in Far Cry Beyond. Um, yeah. I'm excited to get this. This is a game that I will absolutely play uh, on my own or with people. Uh, I want to see the campaign. I'm having a blast with it. It's fun. It's chaotic. It's a little random at times, but I like the fact that it's hard. It's brutal. You feel like you could play the scenario a little bit better. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of things. So thanks for being here. Thanks for watching. Whatever the case, whatever you do, remember to do the important thing. Get out and play some games. I'll see you next time. Thank you.